In this video, I'll show you how to solve the star and the F2L of the Megaminx, which is equivalent to your cross and F2L on your 3x3, except we're doing it on the Megaminx. In this first part of our Beginner's Megaminx tutorial, I'll be teaching you to solve what's known as the star and the F2L. So after you finish this step, your puzzle should look something like this. Again, I need to strongly reiterate that you should definitely know how to solve a 3x3 before solving the Megaminx, and that you should definitely be comfortable with intuitive F2L techniques before watching this tutorial. The reason for this is that having this experience and knowledge on the 3x3 cube makes learning how to solve a Megaminx so much easier, and because Megaminx is essentially an extended version of a 3x3 cube, we'll be using a lot of these intuitive F2L techniques whilst we solve the Megaminx. So, when we get a scrambled Megaminx, the first step that we're going to take is to solve all of our white edge pieces around this white centre. So similar to how we do a cross on the 3x3, which is comprised of four white edge pieces around the white centre, we need, we need to solve our five white edge pieces on our Megaminx around our white centre here. And we can do that, uh, we essentially do that intuitively, and I think for beginners, the easiest thing to do is just to solve one uh, edge piece at a time and don't worry too much about the others. So essentially, um, because Mega Minx has 12 different sides, there's going to be edge pieces all over the place and to try and focus on more than one when you're, when, when you're starting out is going to be very, very tricky. Most people begin their Mega Minx solves on the white side and in this tutorial, I'll also be solving on white to start with for consistency, but you can start out with a different color if you like. So if you want, if you really want, you can build the star on whichever color you, you'd like around the, around the puzzle. So you could start on light blue, orange, or any of the other 12 colors. So let's start out by solving one cross, one star edge. So I've added, identified this edge piece here. So this is the white and the purple edge piece, which is relatively close to the white side because it's just in an adjacent layer. Now, what we're going to do is firstly bring this white uh, sticker, this, this white color to here by doing an F move. And now we're in a position where we can just move this one up into our white layer. So match up this color with this center. And now, like on the 3x3, we also need to match up this purple sticker with the purple center. So we can do something like U prime here. And now we've solved this white and purple edge. We've solved, um, so we've, we've uh, matched up the white sticker to the white center and the purple sticker to the purple center, like that. Okay, so now that we've solved one of our star edges, let's have a look around and try and find another one. So I see a few over here. Um, the first one that I see is this white and dark green edge piece. So this is the white and dark green edge piece and it belongs up here in between the white center and the dark green center. So what I can do is um, I've got this face here. I can shift this edge piece over to this position. So now it's underneath where it needs to go. And notice that if I do an R2 like that, it will be in its position, but it's incorrectly oriented. So it's flipped in place. So that's not ideal, that's not what we want. So what I'm gonna do is just do an R move and I need to get this one up to here. So if you're familiar and comfortable with solving the cross on a three by three, as you should be, you should know that to move this edge piece to this position and keep this one intact, we can do something like U, L prime, U prime. And now we've solved this white and purple and the white and green one. The next edge piece that I see that belongs in our star, so in our white layer, is this white and yellow piece. And it's over here um, underneath the green center, so underneath the white and green edge, and it needs to go over to this position. So what I'm gonna do is actually just shift it around like that. So now it's underneath where it needs to go, this white and yellow one. And again, we have a case where if we put it into its position, it will be incorrectly flipped. So what I'm gonna do is do an L prime like that. Now this one needs to go right here. So we can do something like U prime, R, and then U to solve it. And now we've got three of our five star edges solved. The next white edge that I see is this white and red one down here. 
and it belongs up here in this position. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to rotate it over to the red side, like so. And then again, I have this case where it's flipped. So I can do something like R and then U L prime, U prime. And then my last uh, edge that belongs in my star is this white and blue one down here. Now I'm going to do something a little bit different just to show you that we can be pretty flexible in terms of how we solve these star pieces. So instead of moving this one all the way over to this blue face here, what I can do is notice that this white and blue piece needs to go in this position here. And I could technically rotate it up into the white face by doing an R2 like that, and it will match up with the white center. So what I can do is do a U move to bring this empty space up here, then do an R2 move like that, and then do a U prime. And now we've solved all five of our white uh, edge pieces, and we've solved this white star like so. So as I mentioned, the star is really something that can only be solved intuitively. And for a beginner who's getting comfortable with, you know, having 12 different sides on a Megamix, um, moving pieces around from one layer to another can be quite tricky at first, but with enough patience and a little bit of practice, um, this is something that you'll get comfortable with reasonably quickly. For the star and the F2L, you will notice that it can be really, really difficult at times to find the pieces that you're looking for. Uh, this is because, like I said, Megaminx has 12 sides and only a few of them are visible at any one point. And because there are so many different pieces, and if you're only looking for one or two pieces at a time, then sometimes you might have to search the entire Megaminx and look around for it, and that can be quite difficult and time consuming. So after we've solved the star, the next step is to fill in all five of these F2L slots around our star. So as we would on the 3x3, three three, we've got this F2L slot comprised of one corner and one edge, and we solve all four of those around our cross. We need to solve five of those around our star in order to create the F2L on the Megaminx. Again, as I've mentioned, for this tutorial, you need to be comfortable with using intuitive F2L techniques on the 3x3 in order to be able to use them on the Megamix because it's a little bit more tricky with more layers involved. So let's start out by putting our star on the bottom face and searching for an F2L pair. So that is a corner and its corresponding edge. And I notice here that I have this white, red and dark green corner and the edge that belongs with this corner is the red and the dark green edge, which is down here. And these two pieces belong in this F2L slot in between the red and dark green edges. So what I'm going to do is notice that um, above this F2L slot, we essentially have this free layer here. And that's going to be essentially like our F2L layer on our three, uh, our last layer on our three by three. So on a three by three, um, because we've solved the cross on the bottom, this top area is kind of like our working zone or where we can find pieces and use them to insert into our F2L slots. The layer directly above the F2L slot where we have a corner and edge that go there is what we'll be using um, to kind of pair up and solve our F2L pieces. So here we've got this uh, white, red and dark green corner. And what I'm gonna do is bring this red and dark green edge up into this layer here. So now I've got this corner here, and this edge, and they both belong in this F2L slot. Our job now is to pair them up and insert them into this F2L slot. And we have a case where the stickers on top are of the same color. So we have the red sticker on top here and the red sticker on top here. So what we can do is remember we can hide our corner bring the edge piece on top of it um, like that so that when we unhide the corner we create this paired uh, this F2L pair and then what we can do is just insert it into this slot using U R U prime R prime so that is just bringing up the slot and inserting it and now we've we paired up these two pieces and inserted them into this F2L slot and we have four more F2L pairs to solve around our puzzle. When you're starting out, it may make sense to solve the F2L pairs in one specific order, just so that you get comfortable with, you know, recognizing which pieces that you need to solve 
searching for them, finding them, and then solving them. But as you get more advanced, um, you will you'll find that you'll solve these F2L pairs in more of a random order, depending on the cases that come up. Um, but in this case, we're going to move from this F2L pair to this one here. So this will be the white and red F2, uh, the, the blue and red F2L pair. And the corner is already up here in this working layer. So here we've got this F2L slot where the pieces need to go. And this layer up here is going to be our working layer. The corner piece is already here, so this is the white, uh, dark blue, and red. And the edge piece is here, so this is the uh, dark blue and red edge piece. So what I'm going to do is just move it up, and now we've got both of these two pieces in our working layer. What I can do is solve these two like I would uh, a normal F2L pair. So we have this case again, where we have the same color on top, so dark blue is facing upwards of this corner and the dark blue of this edge is also facing upwards. So what I can do is hide the corner like so, move this edge piece over to this position, unhide the corner, and now we have this F2L pair and we can just insert it like so. So after solving the red and dark blue pair, I'm going to look for the yellow and dark blue pieces. So here, I've got the dark blue and yellow edge piece. So what I'm going to do is move it up to this working layer directly above this F2L slot up here like that. And now I need to search for the white, yellow and dark blue corner and it's over here. So what I can do with this piece is also just move it. And now I've got both of these two pieces in this layer directly above the slot where they belong. So now I need to think about what I'm going to do to get these two pieces into this slot here between the yellow and dark blue centers. And we have a case where the yellow sticker of the white corner is facing upwards and the blue sticker of the edge is facing upwards. So this is um, one of our F2L cases where we need to get the pieces into a specific position so that we can do something like R, uh, R U R prime or L prime U prime L to insert the F2L pair. And you'll notice here that we have this white sticker of the corner facing towards us. So we want to get this edge piece over to this position here so that we can do something like L prime to pair them up, U prime and then L. So what I want to do is hide this corner, move this edge over to this position. So I'll hide the corner down there like that move this edge over to this position by doing a U2 prime and then unhide the corner. So now we've got these two pieces set up to a case whereby I can just solve them by doing L prime to pair them up, U prime and then L. So that's one of our um, intuitive F2L cases that we've learned. So next up, I'm going to solve the purple and yellow F2L pair. And I've got this purple and yellow edge here already and my purple and yellow corner, white, purple and yellow, is over here. So I can move it up into this working layer directly above this purple and yellow slot. Now I have a case where I have the white sticker facing upwards. So what I need to do here is align, like, like in the F2L on the 3x3, align this edge with the corresponding center. So that is this sticker, this yellow color here is aligned, is, is attached to this yellow center. Then we move this edge away from the F2L slot, bring the corner on top of it, like so, and then bring it back down. And that pairs up this uh, F2L pair. So it pairs up this corner and this edge, and we can go ahead and insert it like so. So you will have noticed that so far, once we get our corner and our edge into this layer, um, directly above the slot in which they belong, we essentially just use adapt just use adaptations of 3x3 intuitive F2L techniques to pair them up and insert them into the slot. And also notice that on a Megaminx, because we have more layers, um, there's a little bit more freedom in with regards to how we actually pair up these F2L pieces and insert them. So we've solved four of our F2L slots. This last one here is dark green and the purple. And we've got this um, corner here, so this is the corner with the white sticker on it, up in this layer, 
and the dark green and purple edge is down here. So I can just move it up to the top here. Now what I'm going to do is pair up these two so I can hide this corner in a few different ways. Um, I can do a U prime and then hide it back like that because we have this case where these two stickers on top are the same color. So I can do a U prime, hide the corner, bring the edge over to this position, unhide the corner, and now we've got these two paired up. What I can do is just move them over and insert them. So now we've solved all of our five F2L slots around our white star. Like when learning anything new, um, learning how to use these intuitive F2L techniques on a Megaminx will take a little bit of practice, especially because of all the new layers. Um, it might be a little bit difficult to locate pieces and then move them to uh, kind of your working layer above your F2L slot, um, but this will take yeah just a little bit of time and practice to get used to finding pieces, moving them around, and then inserting them. The good part about the Megaminx is that you don't need to learn any new algorithms and in fact solving um, F2L pairs and pieces intuitively is definitely the fastest way of solving your Megaminx.